Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films. Now, in this video right here, we're gonna talk about the Unreal Engine 5 unrecord gameplay little demo again, okay? So in this video right here, I'm going to talk about how I think they created that environment that we saw in that viral demo gameplay that was made in Unreal Engine 5. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, just Google search Unreal Engine 5 unrecord and watch that first and then come right back in. Now I did make a video about this demo already and one of the questions I got was, hey, do you think that eventually this would get ported to virtual reality or VR? So again, in this video right here, we're going to take a look and see if we can kind of play this little environment that I put together in a couple of hours in VR. So with that being said, here's my theory on how they were able to pull that off. First things first, I believe their level was a scanned level, similar to this one that you're looking at right now. So if I click on this mesh, you're gonna see that I have this thing right here. I'm gonna double click this mesh. This is a scanned, photo scan, photogrammetry building inside of a building, okay? So with that being said, I think they used photogrammetry on this skeleton on the outside, the outline of the environment that they used. On top of that, the inside, majority of the props that they used were photo scan assets, kind of like what you're seeing right now. Now in this right here, granted, look, I put this together in a couple of hours, so it's not gonna be as good as dramas unrecord. No way, man. The, the environment they created there was so freaking top notch. It was amazing. And basically, I kind of did the same concept. Well, not I think how they did it. So I just grabbed a couple of assets in the marketplace that are pretty photorealistic. Additionally, some mega scan assets as well. So if I click on this little concrete rubble, and I'll double click it and make this bigger, you're gonna see that this is pretty high quality asset right here. Matter of fact, this is 1.9, almost 2 million triangles right here. They were able to put a lot of these high quality assets in their level, I believe, because they used Nanite. Now, if you're not familiar with Nanite, basically in a nutshell, Nanite lets you import high poly assets and pretty much use that in your scene without having to worry about performance. Additionally, whenever you use Nanite, it actually compresses the files as well. So the file size and the game sizes would potentially be a lot smaller if they were to use Nanite in their scene. Now again, I don't know if they use Nanite, I'm just guessing here because some of the photo, because some of the props that they used were really high quality assets. So I'm gonna look at this right here, this is a mega scan asset, and I'm gonna turn off Nanite for a second so I can kind of show you what this looks like without Nanite on. All right, so Nanite is off now for this mesh, and I'm gonna double click it, and as you can see, it is two million triangles and the disk size is 92.96 megabytes, right? So for this one mesh, it's taken almost 100 megabytes of disk space. Now I'm bringing this up because if you watch the demo, you're gonna notice that the props are pretty high quality. The trash bags, they had like things like tarp crates, they have some stuff inside the photogrammetry that are photorealistic. And I think this is how they're able to pull that off is they mixed a photo scan environment and high quality, high poly photo scan object or sculpted 3D objects in their environment, which is insane. And again, now what we're gonna do is convert this to Nanite and we're gonna turn it into Nanite. Now, Nanite is a feature that came out with Unreal Engine 5. Honestly, it's probably one of the best technologies that ever came out in video games. And it's why people are swapping over, ditching their own game engines to swap to Unreal Engine 5. Man, there's so many AAA studios right now that are swapping to Unreal. It's just Unreal. So let me double click this now. And now you're gonna see that this same file without much loss of fidelity on the actual mesh itself, without losing that much fidelity, it still looks freaking amazing. This is now 20 megabytes of file size. And additionally, this is now only 24,000, right, triangles. But it does not reduce the quality by that much. Because if I minimize this, you're gonna see that this mesh right here 
it's still pretty high quality. And again, you're gonna notice that a lot. You're gonna notice a lot of high quality meshes in their demo, which is pretty darn cool. Now, photogrammetry is nothing new, all right? So if you look at games nowadays, they are using photogrammetry. The Resident Evil remake uh, uses a lot of photogrammetry. Some of them are actually Quixel Mega Scan assets. But what Unrecord did was they combined all of these amazing tiny little details to create probably one of the most photorealistic gameplays I have ever seen. So realistic that a lot of people, even to this day, are still arguing that the Unrecord gameplay was indeed real life. But again, if you have used Unreal Engine 5 before, and you know about Nanite, and you know about Lumen, and you've seen it in the editor, such as this, you're gonna know that the Unrecord gameplay is pretty much just a gameplay. Now, in this scene right here, if I go to Lit and go Nanite Visualization, I'm gonna go to Triangles. You can see right here that I pretty much Nanited majority of my static meshes in here, even the photo scanned uh, environment, the skeleton or the outline of our warehouse here. You can see right here that those freaking mesh, all the mesh I'm using here are nanite. They're really, really dense, really, really high quality assets. So if I go to lit right here, and you're gonna see that it, it just looks amazing. And again, I'm not trying to compare drama's environment to mine. I'm not an environment artist whatsoever. This is just something that I put in here because honestly, I was so impressed by that demo that I wanted to see if I can kind of create something similar. So with that out of the way, the next thing we're gonna be tackling is the question of whenever Unrecord gets made, if and when, will it be able to run in a virtual reality system? I'm thinking PC VR here. I'm not talking about MetaQuest or anything like that. I'm talking about a PC VR. So again, with that being said, what I did here is I just put a little VR character that we can go ahead and walk around in. So I'm gonna turn on my Vive. I have the HTC Vive Gen 1 Pro. Right now, I'm gonna turn both of them on. I know I don't have the Valve Index, but I'm broke, so I'm gonna have to wait until I get some funds to get that going. And I have my helmet right here. Now, just a disclaimer, if you get dizzy a lot, stop watching this video because I'm gonna have my Vive helmet on and we're gonna walk around in this space right here. And that's why I have my action camera with wide angle because I'm gonna stand up and walk around. All right, so let's make sure we have VR preview and I'm gonna play this now and I'll put on my VR goggles. Okay, so here we are in VR, Unreal Engine 5, okay, we have my VR gloves right here. And we are now walking around in here. Now, if you look at my top right corner, I'm running this at 45 frames per second per eye. All right, I have the pixel density set to 0.8, which obviously it's not one, so it's not maximum. And I'm running this on the RTX 4090. So with that being said, in my humblest opinion, even though we don't have a lot of AI here, we just have a rabbit walking around, I absolutely believe that one day, games like Unrecord can run in VR, okay? So I don't have much room in my house, in my room here, so I'm just gonna use my controller to move around in space, All right? So I'm gonna move right here. And again, we're gonna take a look at these high quality assets. And that being said, this is not maxed out whatsoever. I just have textures all the way to cinematic, uh, global illumination, and I believe reflection, but everything else is turned down to medium or low. Okay, so this is not the highest possible quality that you're gonna get out of this. The whole point of this is, can we run something in VR like Unrecord? And additionally, with Unreal Engine 5.1, they did add support to Nanite, and Lumen. That's why we're able to see all these nanite objects all around us. Okay. Now I didn't finish this environment here, but I am gonna eventually add more detail to this. around 
And I do have TSR enabled right now. I tried using uh, the uh, temporal, is it TAA? It just doesn't look as sharp as TSR. So with TSR, this looks pretty darn good. See? Okay. We're staying at pretty 45 frames per second per eye air, which is pretty good. So you're looking at 90 frames per second, as far as I know. And honestly, on my screen, on my HMD, this looks pretty good. Now, I don't have high quality translucency reflections turned on. This is software lumen. Okay, this is not hardware lumen, which you're looking at right now. So again, there's much more improvement, but I didn't try it yet because I wouldn't be able to test this out first with a high frame rate here like you're seeing, which is about 45 frames per second per eye. Here's our little cute rabbit. Ah, oh, hey rabbit. What you doing, rabbit? Look at him. He's chilling, bro. Just don't poop on me, bro. Right? Pretty cool. And again, that nanite mesh right there. That's pretty awesome. And those bags look pretty good. And that little container right there looks good. And the ground right here are actually, I got this from the marketplace. So this is still pretty gamey right here. This is not Quixel Mega Scans right here what you're looking at as far as the ground goes. So you can see it's good, but it's not like that, that freaking good right there. Now, in my opinion, games in VR can look like this, as long as you have like some type of loading screens, which honestly, I don't mind as long as the loading screens aren't like too long. But I think for scenarios like this, you can have gameplay here, talk, whatever, find things, and then move on to the next level with a loading screen, and I'll be totally fine with that. So out of this entire place, I believe I only have maybe four or five Quixel Mega Scan assets. Majority of it are uh, assets that I got from the Epic Games Marketplace. So they're pretty much so very gamey. Like these little cabinets right here, uh, these containers, pretty much everything else aside for like a couple of rubble things and rocks. Wish I can walk around, man. I can't wait till like you can do VR in laptops so I can take this out outside and actually walk around it because I will have more space. But yeah, what do y'all think? I think this is definitely playable. Even at hybrid settings with software Lumen, that's why you're getting a lot of crappy, crappy translucence and your reflections there. Um, but eventually, you know, we're going to be able to play these games in a 3060 or 4 series. Now, I'm having issues with Niagara particles right now. For some reason, it's not showing up in VR. Guess I can have like two hands. Now, one of the most impressive things that they had in that gameplay was the reloading and the actual hand animation. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be able to mimic that, man. That takes a lot of skills. Um, but as you can see right here, we can hold this gun. And go ahead and turn down your volume as well, because this thing fires. And again, you don't see the muzzle flash. I try and, I'm having issues with the particle system right now. But look at this. 
This looks pretty good. That's not a real rabbit, by the way. I don't want FEMA to, like, get me. Oh, yeah. It's dead. But, yeah, that's pretty much it for this demo. What do you all think, man? Not bad, right? Power of Unreal Engine 5. Right here.